outplaying your opponent is by far one of the most satisfying things you can do in League of Legends. There's no greater rush than barely winning a fight against your enemies through a clutch play of your own. Everyone wants to be the one making all the montage plays in solo queue, so in this guide we're going to cover 5 beginner friendly tips you can incorporate that will instantly kick your mechanics up a notch. The first thing to remember is that playmaking in League of Legends can usually come down to milliseconds at the highest level. Outplaying your opponents generally involves giving them less time to react to your moves, and yourself more time to react to their plays. And one of the best ways to accomplish both those goals is going to be from our first tip, input buffering. Input buffering is just queuing up an action that your character can't make yet, and when they are able to make it, they'll instantly do so. The simplest way of seeing this is by pressing an ability that isn't in range yet. For a lot of spells, this will cause your character to move to that location and then immediately cast said spell. This is pretty basic knowledge, so how could this be useful for you? Well, one of the most consistent ways that players instantly close the gap against their opponents tends to be with flash. Which means that what you should be doing is first queuing up your ability or auto attack and then pressing your flash. This will cause your ability or auto attack to come out instantly, giving your opponent zero time to react to what's happening. Input buffering is the cause of all those silly deaths you see from time to time, where someone flashes after someone has already flashed on them. By the time the aggressing player's flash has gone off, there's literally nothing the other player can do. Do keep in mind that input buffering isn't only useful for when you're trying to go in on your opponents. It's also a great defensive option in situations where you might be the one being engaged on. For example, in this situation, Malzahar is super low on health and has to be wary of LeBlanc trying to W to finish him off. It would be hard to react to Flash W from LeBlanc, and so in between movement commands, Malzahar is buffering his ultimate on LeBlanc. When she commits to the play, reaction time isn't required. Malzahar's ultimate was already queued up, and so it immediately stops LeBlanc in her tracks and turns the play favorably. Up next is learning as many animation cancels for this specific champion you play as possible. If you don't know, almost every action in the game has an animation required to complete for the action to go off. For example, Kai'Sa's W requires her to stand still for a moment to launch a missile at her opponents. But as we said, League is a game of milliseconds. Animation times can be exploited by your opponent in multiple ways. For example, while you're in the middle of an animation, your opponent can line up a skill shot that you can't dodge since you're still stuck standing still. Not only that, but slow animation spells can be really easy to react to as well. And thus, great players rely on animation cancelling. All this means is that you're trying to find as many ways as possible to end an ability or auto attacks animation earlier than it would normally end. The most famous animation cancels tend to be ones that revolve around flash. Generally, these combos start with an ability that has a windup. The idea is that you can completely get rid of the time that you stand still during the windup by incorporating flash with the ability. Here's an example. Look at the speed of Lee Sin's flashing behind someone in order to kick them. If Lee Sin presses flash first, then it gives their opponent a bit of time to react before being knocked back. But Lee Sin can actually press his ultimate before flash. This way, the windup is cancelled through the flash, and his opponent is kicked almost instantly as Lee reappears behind them. Many champions such as Ari rely on this sort of animation cancel in order to be properly played. Ari is incredibly reliant on landing her charm in order to score kills, and cancelling her charm's windup with flash can help her catch opponents off guard to score easy kills. But of course, animation cancels aren't only possible through Flash. For example, let's take a look at the queen of animation cancels herself, Riven. One of the most basic but potent animation cancels she has is using her E to enable what is known as a double cast. Take a look at the speed at which Riven's Q comes out after her W. The animation is quite long, and it takes a while to finish before she can actually cast W. But Riven players realize that by pressing E, Riven then has around a 0.75 second window where she can press W and then Q instantly for an incredibly fluid combo, completely bypassing W's normal long animation. Not only can champions cancel animations through their own kits, but even from the items they buy as well. For example, Quinn can completely cancel her E's long animation with Prowler's Claw. This allows her to begin damaging her opponents instantly instead of having to complete her vault for massive instantaneous burst. As a small side note, before moving on, this may not be strictly animation cancelling, but does fall under the category of getting off your abilities faster. Certain ability sequences will happen quicker than others. A great example of this would be Yasuo's Q and W. If you press Q and then try to W, there is a noticeable delay before your wind wall comes out. Reverse this order and you can W while your Q comes out instantly, since your wind wall has no animation delay. 
When it comes to correctability sequence and animation canceling, we'd highly suggest that you either find communities centered around your specific champion, or that you look up some online guides tailored around your champion's mechanics. This is by far one of the most important things you can do to get better at the characters you play. The next thing you should prioritize working on is your mouse clicking. There's a ton of skill that revolves around mouse movement in League of Legends, and unfortunately there's two major culprits we notice when reviewing lower elo players in regards to their mouse movement. The proximity of their clicks relative to their own champion, and the frequency of how often they actually input a movement command. Let's start with where you're likely clicking. When looking at lower elo players, more often than not, what we see is that the players are clicking way too far away from their own champions. Think about it, the farther away that your clicks are, then the harder it is for you to react to things. If your mouse is all the way over here, and then your opponent throws a skill shot, it takes way too long for you to be able to move your mouse to where you need to in order to dodge the enemy's spell. Compare that to where a challenger player clicks, and you'll see why it almost feels impossible to hit them with skill shots a lot of the time. Their clicks are always so close to their champions that it makes it much easier to react to anything that their opponent is doing. The next step on top of clicking closer to your champions is to increase the frequency at which you click. Not only do lower elo players click too far away from themselves, but they input significantly less clicks than experienced players. These two failures result in the following problem. Look how predictable and easy to track an inexperienced player's movement looks. It's incredibly obvious as to what they plan on doing next. Now we want you to compare that to a challenger player's movement. It's very hard to get a read on them as they look very jittery. It's hard to predict whether they'll be going aggressive soon or what direction they plan to move in. We highly suggest that you practice both clicking closer to your character and more frequently, as having higher reaction time and being more unpredictable will inevitably lead to a higher chance that you outplay your opponents. Next up on the list is using normal cast abilities alongside quick cast. If you aren't already, you should go to your hotkeys under options and enable quick cast for all of your abilities. Make sure that you get used to this as quickly as possible, even if it feels uncomfortable at first. All we should need to do to convince you is to show you the speed at which a player can full combo someone using normal cast compared to using quick casting. The difference is night and day in a game like League. That being said, many players who make the switch to quick cast neglect to make keybind normal cast for their abilities as well. Most players tend to use the shift modifier for this, but you can obviously use what you prefer. There's multiple advantages to having keybinds for both. When it comes to long range abilities, it can be difficult to memorize the exact range of how far your spell can go. That's when you bring out the normal cast so that you can be sure that you're in range and to help line up your spell to guarantee a hit on your opponent. More importantly though, many abilities require precise placement that can normally be hard to pull off without normal casting. Twisted Fate is a great example. If you want to line up your Q to hit multiple targets, you'd want to use your normal cast, that way you know exactly how to position to get the perfect trajectory for your cards. Viger's Cage is another ability that really requires normal casting. You won't be able to get the correct placement for your cage if you don't line it up with the indicators for where it's going to appear. In a lot of cases though, you just want to make sure you can align your abilities to hit exactly what you need them to hit. Having both quick casting enabled for speed and normal cast binds for accuracy is incredibly important to playing the game optimally. Our final tip is one that many of you may already be familiar with, and that's the attack champions only keybind. When you hold down your bind for this, it makes it so that you can't target anything but enemy champions with auto attacks or spells. This is very useful when you need precise clicks on your opponent, but they happen to be standing near their turret or minions, which might cause you to misclick. While that is already very useful and many players are aware of this, we found that a large majority of people aren't aware there's actually a toggle for this feature under the game tab in the settings. With this setting enabled, you only have to press your keybind once, and you'll maintain the attack champion only effect until you press it again. It's very useful to have this enabled when going for extended plays on your opponent, where you'll need to precisely click on them multiple times. Having to hold down your keybind throughout the entire play would be incredibly annoying, and that's why we had to include this tip in the guide, as it's an incredible quality of life setting that will make your lives infinitely easier. If you incorporate all five of these tips into your arsenal, then you'll be outplaying your opponents way more often in no time. Alright guys, before we wrap this up, let's tell you a little bit more about Skill Capped. So, we offer a 5 division rank up guarantee, and think that's a pretty crazy thing to offer. It's like a gym membership guaranteeing you'll get ripped. Your local gym would go bust if they offered that, right? Not us. We've offered this for years because our service really does work. It works so well, in fact, that we are able to produce by far the largest catalog of premium league guides on the internet. We add over 20 videos a week with over 1,600 guides curated into over 100 courses no one can compare. 
there. We've also sent Challenger players into ELO Hell 714 times and counting, where they commentate how to carry live. They also respond to all questions asked. Sign up today for as little as $4.99 a month if you are serious about improving. Thanks for watching, and we'll catch you in the next one.